Now, I want us to take a tangent and maybe touch on the earlier story by Nicole Njuguna where an, an animal feed plant has just been unveiled. Uh, we want to enter the world of veterinary and right now I'm joined by Dr. Calvin Osori, a veterinary surgeon and candidate for the position of Kenya Veterinary Association, national chairman. The upcoming elections is also a member of the Kenya Veterinary Association. Uh, who is registered by the Kenya Veterinary Board. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari, for making time. Uh, I know f right now you are a veterinary surgeon, but right now medics are on strike. Um, first of all, the challenges that the medics have been outlining, is it similar with uh, the veterinary wing of medicine? Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, in a way, I would say those challenges are actually worse for, for veterinary surgeons. Uh, because when you look at the salary that uh, a veterinary surgeon earns, and uh, the six years that a veterinary surgeon has to, to go to school and, and do his internship, uh, it is actually an insult to, to those six years. And the biggest issue we've had with uh, uh, the salary and even the working conditions for veterinary surgeons is the veterinary scheme of service. Now, the government's veterinary scheme of service is uh, outdated. So you find that the risks that existed uh, uh, 10 years ago mm. have evolved into new risks. Mm. But you find a veterinary surgeon being paid, let's say, 5,000 risk allowance. Uh, uh, you find a veterinary surgeon not being paid an unpractice allowance uh, compared to, to their medical counterparts. Mm. Uh, it is even worse, actually, for, medic, uh, for veterinary interns because uh, what they're earning right now is close to eight times less than what their medical counterparts uh, are earning. Mm. So it's not like we, we really want to, to, to earn what our medical counterparts are earning, mm. but we, we are telling the government we need to earn something that is consummate with uh, our background as veterinary surgeons. Definitely. Yes. And we say, you know, the whole agricultural talk, food security talk, mm. that is the backbone of our country. Mm, yes. And looking at the way we are treating professionals, do you think the veterinary wing has been neglected, that is one. Mm -hmm. And what would be the impact? If at all we are to, the government works up on the good side of bed and decide to bring these changes that you are saying needs to happen, yeah. uh, what impact would that have on uh, the economy, on food security of the nation? Uh, that's a very good question, Nick, because uh, the veterinary sector or subsector actually cuts across uh, the agriculture sector and the healthcare uh, uh, industry. So this is a subsector that, a profession that cuts across those two. Mm -hmm. And those two, as you said, are the mainstay of the economy. I think if the government invested more, if you look at the developed countries, uh, the government has invested a lot, not just in paying veterinary professionals, but also in providing a favorable working uh, conditions for, 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 for those professionals. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you go to veterinary offices, uh, they, they are actually they're dilapidated. Some of them don't even have... Uh, refrigerators, for example. Some of them don't even have uh, power backup in case of power failure. Uh, and this neglect actually trickles down to the farmer because mm -hmm. this vet is required to wake up in the morning and vaccinate a cow. But then the, 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 there's no power to, to maintain the, the cold chain for the vaccines. Mm -hmm. I think if the government is serious about improving the agriculture sector, if the government is serious about preventing uh, the spread of uh, diseases from animals to human beings, it needs to invest more in the, in the veterinary profession mm. to actually reap those fruits. Okay. Yeah. Um, recently, we've also had talks of fake fertilizer mm -hmm. uh, in the country, which is a huge concern and a huge dent when you talk about food security, empowering our farmers. Uh, when it comes to the veterinary wing, um, first of all, you guys utilize a lot of drugs, medicine, you've talked about vaccines yeah. and whatnot. How rife is this issue of uh, fake products? So uh, the issue of fake uh, products in the country, I think, uh, reflects on the society. We are really a society that loves you know, getting rich uh, pretty quick. Uh, we don't really care so much about the consequences later on. Now, the, the, what we have in the veterinary uh, 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 sector is uh, we have institutions that are producing very good quality uh, of products. We have the Kenya Veterinary Vaccines Production Institute, which does vaccines for the whole of Africa. We have the Kenya Animal Genetic Resource Center, again, doing, producing genetic and more genetic products for the whole continent. Very nice products. But then you have a few crooks in the country who actually ensure that whatever reaches the farmer is not the premium product that the farmer ordered for. 
and, and, and what I think the government needs to do with, with such uh, a malpractice is empower the relevant organs. Mm. So can, can the government capacity build the Kenya Veterinary Board, for example? Mm. Can it capacity build the Veterinary Medicines Directorate? Because the problem we have is uh, these two bodies do not really have enough inspectors across the country. So for the farmer to be protected against these uh, unscrupulous players, the government has to equip these two bodies and even the Kenya Bureau of Standards to play their role perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what nature of investment will this be? What is the gap when you talk about not having uh, enough inspectors across the country? What, what numbers are we working with? What we're looking at, Nick, will be, uh, as a start, it will be good to have an inspector in every county. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you actually look at it, that will, will also not be enough. But that is a good point to start because uh, tasking one person to reach the whole county uh, is, not, is not really feasible, mm -hmm. but that is a good start. At the moment, you realize that these bodies do not really have inspectors in every county. Uh, their budgets are not really as big as they should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at the budget they're asking for, it's not really as much as probably the government and, and other stakeholders believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can start with having an inspector in every county, mm -hmm. capacity building that inspector to have assistance and grow up from there. When you look at countries that have actually excelled in the healthcare system uh, and in the agriculture sector, they have ensured that that uh, whole chain, value chain, starting from the, uh, from the input to the professionals to the market has mm -hmm. been well taken care of. Mm -hmm. At the moment, our value chain is actually broken up. Mm -hmm. You have substandard uh, inputs, as, as we've just talked about, and we have extension officers and veterinary professionals who have not really been taken care of, have not been given the, the requisite support. Mm -hmm. And then you have a market that uh, the government is not really in control of. So the agriculture sector will continue suffering unless the government is intentional about uh, putting effort into it. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's talk regulation. Because uh, I know you're part of the Kenya Veterinary Board. Um, who regulates the veterinary sector? And even when you talk about uh, some of these challenges, um, I know you've mentioned the government so much. Mm -hmm. Is it just a, a matter of empowering uh, particular organizations or particular players uh, so that we have a trickle down or we need an overhaul of regulation? Uh, thanks, Nick. I think uh, there are laws that actually need to be passed. We have the animal health bill that is still pending. It hasn't really, there's, there's been no much progress on it uh, that actually seeks to overhaul the whole animal health uh, industry. We have the animal welfare and protection bill, again, which uh, talks about animal welfare, uh, which seeks to put us uh, with our peers internationally who have taken steps to, to recognize that animal welfare is a big issue. Uh, we have uh, other bills and regulations that are pending, but I believe uh, the biggest fa uh, issue facing the veterinary profession is not the lack of legislation. Mm -hmm. As much as we want these legislations to bring us at par with our peers, I think it's just the willingness, the, the, the political willingness of the government to mm -hmm. actually put resources in it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I am a member of the Kenya Veterinary Association. Uh, the profession is regulated by the Kenya Veterinary Board. The practice is regulated by the Kenya Veterinary Board. And the board has been doing a good job. Unfortunately, the board can only do so much mm. unless they're empowered financially. Uh, the Veterinary Medicines Directorate, which is uh, uh, regulating uh, the practice of veterinary medicines, again, hasn't really been empowered. They are doing the best they can do at the moment, but the government should empower them more, uh, hire more staff, give them more resources, uh, and then to, 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 to strengthen that, uh, that sector. Uh, I think also what we need to do is also to guard against retro retrogressive laws that are going to take us back uh, where we came from, uh, including provisions in the Kenya uh, Drugs Authority Bill, mm -hmm. uh, which seek to return uh, uh, the, the regulation and the control of veterinary medicines uh, to the Pharmacy and Poisons Board in a way. Uh, as much as we would like to copy what the West has done, I think the U.S. is not necessarily the best jurisdiction for, for, for such a thing. The U.S. has some of the most conservative uh, uh, regulatory le legislations in the world. Mm -hmm. So us trying to copy the FDA, for example, yes. is not necessarily the big step that we are thinking is. Right. Uh, I think we should look more towards what the Commonwealth peers have done. Okay. The UK has ensured that veterinary medicines are regulated by veter veterinary professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada has done the same. So why are we walking back? Okay. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I, I think uh, with more time, we'll be able to go into some of 
the nitty gritties of uh, these uh, regulatory changes that uh, we are seeing, especially uh, in regards to legislation, the Kenya Drugs Authority Bill. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up, Dr. Tari. Uh, but um, I think there's so much room to discuss uh, this sector because, uh, I don't know, we don't talk enough about the veterinary services. And uh, you say your interns are even suffering more compared to uh, the medical interns. Uh, and the sector uh, at large has been neglected and we need a lot of change. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, this conversation is just the beginning. But thank you very much, uh, you. Dr. Calvin Osore. A veterinary sergeant and candidate for the position of Kenya Veterinary Association National Chairmanship uh, in the upcoming election and uh, is also part of the Kenya Veterinary Association uh, registered by the Kenya Veterinary Board and he says that the neglect has to come to an end we need to revamp the veterinary services if at all we are serious about uh, matters to do with food security matters to do with employment then this is a sector that needs to be looked into kindly but for now business today takes a break when you come back we'll be clapping because we'll be talking matters to do with coffee stay tuned